today I'm going to show you how to change your boot logo in Windows without messing with the BIOS. Stay tuned. It's really no surprise to anyone that the Windows UI is not very customizable by default. You can change colors and even the size and shape of certain elements. However, you really can't make any major changes to the Windows UI, well, that Microsoft doesn't approve of. At least, not by default. In reality, just about every aspect of Windows is customizable. It just takes a little bit more work. So I'm thinking about doing a series on customizing aspects of Windows. If you guys wanna see that, then let me know in the comments below. But to start the series off, Today, we're gonna to be customizing the Windows boot logo. This is the logo that you see as Windows boots up with the little circle that spins in the bottom of the screen. This logo is customizable for OEMs. You may notice that if you have a custom built PC, you probably just have the blue Windows flag as the boot logo. But if you have a Dell, HP, or any number of other OEM computers, you may notice that that blue logo is actually the logo for the specific OEM. Windows facilitates this through a custom image and text file stored in the UEFI BIOS that the Windows bootloader looks for when it boots up. This is called the BGRT. That stands for the Boot Graphics Resource Table. This is great if you're an OEM and you're writing your own BIOS, but not so good for the casual user that just wants to modify the boot logo. Now, you know what? It is possible to hack a UEFI BIOS and change this logo. However, it's extremely complicated and it could brick your system if you don't know what you're doing. And so that's where today's guide comes in. I'm gonna show you how to modify this boot logo without touching your BIOS. To do this, we're using a free and open source program called Hack BGRT. This program installs itself into the UEFI partition of the hard drive and replaces the factory boot logo with the one you define. Not only is this a lot safer than modifying your BIOS, but in the case something terribly wrong happens, it's reversible through Windows recovery. In fact, I'll even show you how to do that too. Now, there's a few things you have to keep in mind before following this guide. The first one is that this is only possible if you have a UEFI BIOS. So if your system is not set up with a GPT partition, then this guide simply is not gonna work for you. However, if you have a UEFI BIOS, but you just don't have a GPT partition table, I did another video where I show how to convert an MBR partition to GPT, and I'll go ahead and tag that video right here. Just remember though, that that guide only works if you have a UEFI BIOS, but for whatever reason, you set up Windows as MBR. If you try to follow that guide without a UEFI BIOS, your system will no longer boot. But that's okay, because I did another video showing you how to fix it, and I'll go ahead and tag that one right here too. Another requirement for this guide is that you don't have Secure Boot enabled. This program is not signed, and because of that, it will not work if you have Secure Boot turned on. In fact, you might not be able to boot your system. So, refer to your documentation for your motherboard to find out how to disable Secure Boot in your specific computer. Just make sure that when you're disabling Secure Boot, you're still booting to a GPT partition. This will not work if you set your computer to boot in legacy or MBR mode. So, now that we have that all out of the way, let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so like I said, this is not a terribly hard process to do. It's actually pretty easy. The first thing that we need is we need to actually download the program we're using, which is Hack BGRT. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to this program in the description below. But once you get here, it's on GitHub, it's available for free, it's completely open source. You wanna go down to releases and click on the latest release. Now, as you can see here, the latest release was from 2018. So I don't think this is a really up-to-date program, but it still works great. It at least it worked good for everything that I tried it on, but I only tried it on Windows 10. I'm not sure if it works with Windows 11. You're gonna have to check it out to see if it will. But once you get to this page right here, you go ahead and scroll down and download the zip file right here. And once we get the zip file downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and open this folder up. And we're gonna open up this zip file and we're just gonna drag this off onto our desktop so we can use it. 
So now that we got the program downloaded, we need to actually make an image that we can use for our boot logo. So I'm gonna show you how to make an image using Photoshop. If you wanna use a different program, then you should be able to do that as well. There's a program that I recommend called paint.net that's free that you should be able to use to do this exact same thing. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop. So let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and open up Photoshop. And then once, once Photoshop loads, we need to create ourselves a boot logo. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just going to create a new image here. And I wanna make this image, let's say 1920 by 1080. Now that we have this image ready to go, we wanna go ahead and turn this into a boot logo. And the best way to do that is I would start with a black background. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump some black on here. And then I went ahead and just to save time, I have a couple of logos here that I'm gonna to use to make my boot logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these right here. I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna paste them into this graphic right here. And we're gonna go back and get this one here and then paste it. And then we're gonna kind of manipulate these just to kind of make it look a little bit cooler. So the first thing I wanna do is make this little computer back here be a little bit smaller. So to do that, I'm gonna go into free transform and we're gonna shrink that down just a little bit. And then we're going to put the logo itself right in the middle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now what I wanna do is, this looks kind of boring. It, we can, I think we can dress it up a little bit better than that. So I'm gonna select both of these layers right here. I'm gonna create a new layer and put this behind the logos that we're currently using. And then for this, I'm actually gonna play around with the selection a little bit. So if we go to modify, I'm gonna hit expand and we're gonna go by 50 pixels. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna to go to select again and go to modify and we're gonna hit feather. And for feather, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, 50 pixels. That should look pretty good. And then I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna grab another color. Let's do kind of a light blue here. And then we're gonna dump this color into the middle and that actually looks pretty cool. I'm liking that so far, but it needs to stand out a little bit more. So let's do some effects on this thing. And for effects, I'm gonna go ahead and do a drop shadow on the logo itself. And we're gonna do the same thing on this one. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, now that we have our logo created, there's gonna be one slight problem, is I'm using an ultra-wide monitor, and unfortunately, when you're booting Windows up, it really only respects a regular widescreen orientation. It doesn't really support the ultra-wide, so it's gonna take my logo and stretch it and make it look really funny. So we're gonna do our own little tweaking to be able to make the logo look good on an ultra-wide, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so the way we have to do this is since it's gonna stretch this out, we're just going to kind of crush it ahead of time. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my image and canvas size. I'm gonna change the canvas size to the current resolution on my monitor right now. So to that, it's going to be 3440 by 1440. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And obviously you can see now that our image is much bigger now. We're going to take all of these layers that we have here, we're gonna select all of them, and then we're gonna move these layers straight up to the top right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill this background in with black. Oh, let's try black instead of blue. Let's try that one more time. All right, there we go. All right, now from there, what we need to do is we need to actually squish this logo so that when Windows stretches it out, it looks about normal. And to do that, it's really easy. You just come up to the image size and just resize it to 1920 by 1080. And when we do that, you'll see it kind of squished the image right there. As you can see, it looks really squished from where it was before. So we're gonna go ahead and click on our select tool. We're going to highlight the image itself because there's really no point in using the entire, the entire image here. Most of it's just wasted space and it actually will not work if you use an image that's as big as I have currently right here anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and hit edit 
image rather, and we're gonna hit crop, and we're gonna crop it into just that image right there. And then I'm going to save it. We'll use a JPEG and we'll just type in, boot logo is the name. And that's it. So now that we're done with Photoshop, we can go ahead and close this now. And we can actually get into using our program in order to do what we wanted to do. So here's our boot logo right here. We're just gonna keep this open for right now because we're gonna need it in a minute. We're gonna open this folder and we're gonna run the setup script right here. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes. And then what it's gonna ask you now is you have a couple different options. You can choose to install, upgrade, repair, or modify, or you can hit cancel. Obviously we wanna install it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit I for install. And it's gonna give us this little text document right here. This is how you can customize how the image is actually displayed. And believe it or not, you can actually have more than one image. So you can go ahead and play with this if you want, but for us today, we're just gonna change it to a single image. So we can go ahead and close this. And then once we close that, it'll automatically open up Microsoft Paint. And this is the default image that they typically set up, but that's obviously not the one we're gonna use because we made our own image. So to do that, we're gonna come over here. We're going to open this image with paint. And then from there, all we wanna do is hit select all and then copy. And then we can go ahead and close this. And then from there, we wanna go ahead and paste this into paint and there's our boot logo. And from there, all we have to do is hit the save button and then hit close and that's it. It should be installed now. But we're gonna have to reboot the system and see if it actually worked. So to do that, we just go ahead and close all these windows. We hit start and then hit restart. And there you go. We have a custom logo now as we're booting our system, which I think that looks kind of cool. Now, if you follow this guide and something terribly wrong happens and your system is no longer booting, I'm gonna show you how to recover it. The first thing that you're gonna need is a live Linux distro. I'm gonna be using Parted Magic for this example, but you use whatever live Linux distro you want. But just for the record, Parted Magic is a retail distro that's targeted to the computer repair industry. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks and it's definitely worth it. However, it's not necessary for this guide. You use whatever live Linux distro you want and you know, I'm sure there's there's going to be several recommendations in the comments below. So get your system booted off of a live Linux distro and I'll meet you in Linux. Okay, so now that I'm in Parted Magic, um, like I said, you can use any Linux distro you want. Don't feel pressured to purchase this one that I'm using right here just because I'm using it. Anyone is gonna be able to do the job we're doing. This is a really simple process. All you need is a file manager of some kind, and I found that this works better from within Linux than a live Windows distribution. But we'll go ahead and open up your file manager. And then the first thing you wanna do is look for the very first partition. In my case, my original drive is SDA. So SDA1 is gonna be the original partition. But what you're looking for is a fairly small partition that has an EFI folder inside of it because that's the folder that we need to modify. So go ahead and open up the EFI folder and you're gonna notice the hack BGRT folder inside of this. And this is where you install hack BRG in order to change your logo in the first place. So once you open this folder up, you're gonna notice this file right here. This is gonna be boot mgfworiginal.efi. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and right click and hit copy, and then go ahead and hit your back button to get back out to the root of the folder. And then we wanna go into the Microsoft folder here. From there, we're gonna go into the boot folder and we're gonna scroll down and you're gonna notice that same file that we just copied is gonna be right here. But this is the modified one that the program changed in order to make all this work. So what we wanna do is go ahead and hit paste and that's gonna paste the original in. And then from this point, we go ahead and delete this one right here and then rename this one to take the word original out so it's just boot mgfw.efi. And then once we rename that, we can go ahead and close it and reboot the system. 
And that's essentially all there is to the recovery. As you can see, I no longer have a custom boot logo and Windows should be booting normally. But hopefully you don't need to manually recover your system at all. But if you do, that's why I put that part in the video. But if everything worked out, your system should now be displaying a custom boot logo. But if for whatever reason you don't see your custom logo, there's a few things that you could try. The first thing is to make sure the boot logo you created isn't huge. The default BGRT logo, I believe is about 300 by 300 pixels. However, I've successfully made them much bigger than that. In fact, the logo we made in this video is considerably larger than that. But with that said, I did try to make one that was a full 3440 by 1440, the same resolution as my ultra wide. And then when I rebooted, all I saw was the default Windows 10 logo. Another thing that's important is like I stated at the beginning of the video, this program is not signed. So if you have secure boot turned on, you're not going to be able to see a custom boot logo. In fact, your system might not boot at all. So make sure you disable secure boot. That's very important for this guide. Either way, this guide provides no benefit to your system at all other than changing the boot logo. It's a cool custom feature that you could do on your own system that gives it kind of a more custom personalized touch. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm considering doing more videos on customizing windows. So if that interests you, make sure to mention it in the comments below and I'll definitely start doing more of these if there's interest in them. And also check out this video that I did a while back that shows you how to customize a lot of the aspects of Windows 11, including the start menu, taskbar, and many other things. You guys have a great day.